Hi, it's Mary Beth Haynes, and if you're watching this video, thank you for being here. Recently, I was asked to be a guest speaker with Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib for the Dog Cancer Series Documentary Community. Our discussion was focused on how to help our pets best when receiving a cancer diagnosis, and not only how to help them best, but how to help ourselves as well. I remember receiving the diagnosis of my beloved Mr. Mushi, and I remember how I felt inside and how I wanted to help him in every way possible. And although my husband and I did our very best to help him, it still affected us both emotionally and physically. And the one thing that I realized was I was withholding something from myself to be able to help him even better. And that was my own self-care. You see, the question I didn't ask myself was, how can I help him best if I'm not helping myself? We often look at the one end of the leash, and that is of our pet. And well, we should, shouldn't we? But what about the other end of that very same leash? When caregiving for our pets, we wanna make sure that we're doing the absolute best that we can for them. And in order to be able to do that and serve them in the best way to ensure the best quality of life for them, it's really important to remember to take care of us at the same time. And it's something that we often forget to do. This discussion with Dr. Becker Rodney and I will offer you solutions and strategies on how to care for your pet in the best way and also to ensure that you're caring for you at the same time. By watching this video, you will gain valuable insight on how to become the best version of you so that you can help your pet have a better experience through you when caregiving and helping them through a cancer or terminal diagnosis. This video was an exclusive bonus for the Dog Cancer Series Community Inner Circle to be able to provide additional value and support during caregiving for a dog with cancer. And I'm very grateful to Dr. Becker and Rodney for giving me permission to use this to be able to even reach a wider audience and help you as well. I thank them for allowing me to share this with you all. As you watch this video, I invite you to remain present, to come into this present moment and learn the strategies and the tips that we share with you and implement them into your life so that it can not only help your pet in the best way, it will also help you in the best way as well. And you and your pet are a team together. This video will help you implement that teamwork with love. This is Mary Beth Haynes and thank you for making a difference. Our next guest just as a little bit of background. Her name is Mary Beth Haynes and she is by trade, by profession, a grief specialist focusing only in the pet realm. But she also, of course, at the end of every leash, uh, the other end is a human. And we need to be caring as much as we care for the animals in our lives. We also need to be caring for ourselves, our physical bodies and our emotional bodies. Uh, burnout for care of animals is as real if not greater for the pet world than for the human world. And uh, those of you that have been through caring for an animal when they are intensely ill or sick or have, ha or have a um, terminal disease, you know what I'm talking about. It is uh, no less overwhelming to care for an animal with a significant disease as it is for a human. Uh, you are giving your heart and soul to something uh, to give it the best quality of life. And so that takes a toll on us physically and emotionally. Uh, and Mary Beth is going to join us to give us some tips, uh, yes, on caring for your animal, but also caring for yourself. So as soon as she is in and ready, uh, we will pull her in. Now, I am hugely, hugely fascinated with this topic. And quite recently, I remember we stumbled upon a topic written in The New Scientist about how it's the stress of getting that diagnosis, let's say knowing that your animal has cancer or your animal may have any other type of disease for that matter, um, how that can impact your animal um, 
health-wise. So for a lot of people that may come home after a very, you know, rough day, a tough day, you, know, you come in, your animal's so happy to see you, but you're shifting that different type of energy onto that pet. Science shows now that your dog can smell you. Yeah. And after smelling that type of emotion that you expressed, whether it's happiness or whether it's fear, within seconds, your dog will adapt that exact emotion. Now, some people might be like, well, what's the big deal here? And this is why we got on a plane and traveled halfway across the world. In our Inside Scoop Access package that now a lot of your members of, we're gonna show you the science behind that. We spent a week with these scientists sitting down, getting this information, um, <clears throat> and being able to highlight the fact that not only when your animal smells you do they pick up on your emotion, but if you've got an animal at home with cancer, and we were talking about the cortisol release that happens in the body. You probably will explain this a lot better yeah. than I can. What can happen yeah. when your animal starts to churn out cortisol? And you'll hear us say, you know, we've talked about peripherally, you know, it's very important that you're managing your own stress and anxiety. Well, that's easier said than done, right? That's also a topic that will be a big part of Inside Scoop in terms of a deep dive because there, uh, there, that isn't a two second answer. But Rodney's correct. What we know is how we man, how grounded we are, how balanced we are uh, provides a big play for how our pets respond to us in terms of, okay, if mom or dad's panicking, do I need to be panicking? Or if mom and dad is fearful, do I need to be fearful? We are communicating with our pheromones, with how we smell to our dogs and cats. So the question that we think about is, okay, well, what, what am I giving off that my animals are picking up on? And how do I shift? How do I make the shift? to be able to send them the correct nonverbal message through, you can't fake out a uh, fear, or if you're having an internal panic attack, trust me, your dogs will know. So some people say, I, we never fight, or I never cry in front of the dogs, doesn't matter, your dog knows. Mary Beth Haynes is here and in the house to help uh, all of us get a better insight. This is what she does professionally, give a better insight to when you have received that diagnosis and when you are overcome with fear, um, helping to to be the best version of you, not only so you can feel good, but so that your animals can have a better experience being around you. So, let me ear butt up. On backwards. Ah, uh, hi, Mary Beth. Hey, how are you guys? Hey, we're great, how are you? Oh, fantastic, the sun is shining. I can't complain. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, this was very last minute. I called all my favorite people and said, hey, come to the party. Thank you for thank you for making time for this. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Well, thank you. You do you do a great your whole career is um, helping people take better care of themselves, but also uh, in the pet space, you're pet professional. So you really are focused, of course, on nurturing the emotional aspects of animals, particular animals that are dying. Um, and I, you also do, uh, after animals have died, uh, there's the process that happens after that. We'll bring you in for a part of Inside Scoop uh, to talk more about that later. But right now, uh, we are talking about how to manage emotions prior to dying. And that's hard. It's hard to manage. Uh, you know, when you just get that diagnosis of cancer, a lot happens. So if you would be willing, um, I asked Mary Beth when I contacted her, I said, would you please um, think of a tip or two that you would be able to share um, surrounding that topic? And you, you've got two gems, Mary Beth. So what, are you, what, what would be, if I were to call you or do a phone consult with you and say, hey, I'm struggling here, uh, what, would, what would you suggest? I think that um, when we look at the diagnosis of cancer and when we look at the emotions that it gives to us and I just heard you talking about how animals pick up they're, they're so intuitive and they pick up on everything it's really important to put a support system into place and what I think um, what I think might be good that we could talk about today is ways that we can um, incorporate a, a sense of balance into the home a, a sense of calmness because things can get pretty crazy pretty quick. I mean, cancer diagnosis or not, we live in a busy world. We live in a world where everything's go, go, go. Um, we get up in the morning, we go to work, we have our meetings, we're getting groceries, we're going to soccer games, we're going to the gym, we're getting to the dog park, we're doing all of these things. But what about the time that we need 
to be able to re regroup and, and, and ground ourselves. I think this is really important to talk about. So I know that we have people that are listening right now that have received a, 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 a cancer diagnosis with their dog. And I know that there's some people that we're talking with right now that maybe haven't had that diagnosis and they want to do everything that they can to keep them healthy. And you know, before I say anything, I really want to thank you guys, Dr. Karen and Rodney, for what you're doing. I know that you've been, been working tirelessly to provide us with this information. You've been giving us education and tools. I mean, what I've been learning from you guys over your videos and everything over the last couple of weeks has really opened my eyes to things that I can help in our home, like removing the toxins, making sure that, you know, the proper diet and all that. So I want to thank you guys for oh, that. Well, because thank you. Thank you. And you've built a, a magnificent foundation for everybody here to build upon. So let's talk about the, the emotional side of things. Let's talk about practical things that we can do um, to bring that, that balance of peace into our home. Wonderful. So, yeah, great. Awesome. Um, I have uh, two infographics here that everybody can have a copy if they wish. Um, they're really helpful for you. They contain actually simple things that you can do. Um, we make them hard though because life gets busy and so when you, when you make a decision to do things, you're going to find that these are going to be really easy to implement. But the first step starts with making a decision. You know, uh, allowing yourself to be able to do this because we could say, I have no time. My dog, I need to care for my dog. I don't know how to implement this. The first thing you can do is just say, I, I intend to make this time. And you will find that pockets of time will come up, even if it's for 15 minutes. That will make a huge difference. So um, number one that, that we can talk about, and I'll just go over these. There's three steps. Number one is, you know, schedule time for play. And what I mean by that is take your family, if you have a spouse or significant other or children and your dog or your pets, you are all a family unit. So take your family and be a family. Schedule that time for play. What I mean by play is, what are things that you like to do together? Now again, I talked about how life gets crazy and it can get crazy really fast. If I choose to have a calm day today, I promise you something's gonna happen that's gonna give me the opportunity to not be calm anymore, right? So I need to plan this into my day. So let me give you an example. We have a six and a half pound chihuahua. His name is Nemo. He's six and a half pounds of love. He just wants to love everybody and what we do with him is he likes to have his playtime, but he doesn't like to play on the floor. He likes to play on our queen size bed. So picture this six and a half pound chihuahua bouncing around like a jumble gym all over the bed, just having a great time. We make sure that we schedule that time so that he can um, get that, that connection together with us and us with him, but it releases everybody's stress. It releases everybody's, I mean, it, it lifts our feel good hormones. It, it, it gives us those feel good feelings and it's just amazing. And so we make sure that we do that as a family. I mean, my husband, Troy and I don't have uh, human children. We have furry children and this is what we do with him. And it brings all of us a lot of joy. So what can you do? to schedule time for play with your family, with your dog, with your children, with whoever it is that's in your household. It's a great um, tip, great tip. Thank you, and it's something that's so simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so simple, but we and it's, forget. It's also the first thing that goes. It's the first, when, when we have stress, playing, whimsical, light, easy, is the first thing out the window. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is an opportunity for us to bring this back in, which is really empowering, isn't it? It's, it's just yeah. really empowering. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is just, and I do this a lot, I find that when I get pulled away to what's happening in the world, I will look at my dog. I will look at, you know, I used to look at my cat. I would look at them. In fact, everybody that's listening to this right now, you probably have your dog near you or around you or somewhere. Take a look at him or her. What are they doing right now? So maybe they're sleeping, maybe they're playing, maybe they're watching and observing, whatever it is that they're doing. Have you noticed that they're here and now in the present moment? They're not thinking about tomorrow. They're not thinking about next week's appointment. They're here now. 
We can learn a lot from our animal teachers, can't we? So by doing that, schedule that time for play. Um, the next thing is, is taking that a little bit further, and it's, it's something that we've all heard about, the bucket list movie, creating a bucket list for your pet. Create a bucket list for your family, okay? So take, take what it is that you want to do, take what it is that your kids want to do, take what it is that your dog wants to do. I know when, when Mr. Mushi uh, was alive, he had a cancer diagnosis, and I remember getting that diagnosis, and my world that day it was the end of the world. And I remember on his bucket list, he, he was very food motivated. He loved his food. And so we incorporated some healthy treats for him that were quite tasty. But we didn't just give him his treats. We made it like this honoring thing. We gave him his treats. We praised him. We, yay, good for you. It's so yummy. And it really helped. You yes. know, it, 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 it just brought the energy up. And, it, and he felt really good with it too. So create a bucket list for everybody in your family, your dog, all of your pets, and start doing them. Start doing them. That's awesome. And you know, I think sometimes um, going, do, having, celebrating those familiar things that animals know, also when your pet doesn't feel good, it, it reminds them, oh yes, we used to do, it takes them back to the familiar, which is comforting as well. Absolutely. And that's all a part of this, isn't it? You yeah. know, it's, 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 it's simple things that mean so much. Yeah, yeah. So much. And Mary Beth, do you have any like key points or keys that you use in the house when you're trying to change that atmosphere, like music, for instance, or anything like that, that you can suggest? Absolutely. So I'm glad you brought that up because that goes into the third thing here with the self-care aspect. And when it comes to music, I mean, there's tons of different music that, I mean, with Nemo, he likes any kind of music because I pick him up and we start dancing around and he just really likes that. Um, Mushi, on the other hand, Mushi liked calmness. Mushi liked, you know, so when we played the calm music, you know, your pet will let you know what they like. And, and their body language and their, their language to you will, will be really helpful for that. And, and I think that ties in really nicely, Rodney, to, to the self-care aspect. And that's step number three. And it's, you know, we talked about the care of, of the family unit. Let's now talk about care for you. Um, you being able to, to regroup and reground and, and, and re-energize yourself. Um, did that answer your question, Rodney? Yeah. Or was that... No, it absolutely okay. did. I, I, for me, because music is exactly exactly what you just highlighted. You know, depending on the the music and the atmosphere in the house, whenever something like super exciting comes on, you can just see the dogs sort of bouncing around like monkeys inside the house. The whole energy changes. Yep. But for instance, if you go into a meditative mode or you you start putting on uh, slower, more relaxed type of music, I just find the whole package just zen out and sleeping. They sleep way better when I have some sort of meditative music in the background um, versus no music at all. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you, and you know what I have also found is that the, the music that you that resonates with you may not resonate with your pet. Yeah. Um, and so what I will just tell you as a veterinarian is in this situation, your pet wins. So if your pet, if you, if you're into rap, or heavy metal, which is awesome, but if you put on Led Zeppelin and your kitty hides or your dog is like, <laughs> if your dog is sick, forego the Zeppelin and find out what music calms your animal because they win. Yeah. The same holds true for humans when I have to hang around Dr. I, Karen Becker backstage. I, I, I listen to Elevator. I listen to a lot of Elevator music. I just really like 70s elevator music, which Rodney's like, I'm going to throw up. I'll leave the room. So if he's lecturing, I'll turn it off. If I'm lecturing, elevator wins. Yeah, but it's, I think it's honoring, honoring uh, who's, who needs to be honored at that time. And so when it comes to honoring us, taking care of our own bodies, I think sometimes we forget to do that, Mary Beth, when, we, when, we've, when we've got high maintenance care. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so other, other, any other tips you have along that vein? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, coming to the self-care aspect, it is super, super important, and I can't express that enough. When Mr. Mushi um, was going through his diagnosis and the care we were giving him, there was so much care that we had to give. I remember that feeling that if any time that I took time for myself, I felt like I was being selfish. Guilty. And I felt like, yeah. 
Guilty, exactly, and and that can be so heavy yeah. on one's on one's being. And of course, yeah. he's picking up on that too, right? Because he's picking up on on all of that. So I realized that when I was able to take time for myself, I was able to help him better. And so yeah. everybody that's listening to this right now, if you can take that time for yourself. And some people have said to me, but what if something happens? Like, I need to know that he's okay. Have somebody there. You're only a text, a call, um, you know, it could be in the same house. You don't even have to leave to do this. Just go and regroup and get that time for yourself because you'll be able to help you help your yeah. dog even yeah. better. Um, one of the things that you can do, I mean, I, I go into the corner of my office here, or sometimes I go into my bedroom, I put on nice music. I'm also 70s elevator gal. I love that. It helps calm me down. Um, you know, and sometimes I'll go for a walk outside because nature helps to ground me. But it doesn't have to be anything major that you do. It could be reading a book, taking a bath. It could be listening to music. Um, it could be... Um, uh, journaling. I used to hate wow. the thought of journaling. I thought it was the most silliest thing when somebody told me to do it and I did it. And oh my gosh, it amazingly works because you are getting your brain processing feelings and emotions and you're writing it out. And it, it's an, a huge, um, mm. empowering release. So it's, it's remembering to have time as a family unit and incorporate all that into your dog's life. Make it a happy time. Make it time for you all to bond together and have those moments. Take pictures, you know, have, take videos, have those, create a legacy for your time together. And then with your self-care, do the same. Make sure that you're, you're having that time for self-care and then you'll find that I mean, I don't think we can ever find 100% true balance, but we can definitely decrease our stress and bring empowerment and inspiration into our lives as we go through this. Oh, the best tips. So good, Mary Beth. Thank you so much. So I appreciate you taking time to remind us of all things that we know in our hearts our souls. We know we, know we should be doing these things. I think sometimes we need permission we need to be, we need to be reminded that it's okay to do it, yes. and um, she she is a professional, and we should all take this amazing advice. Um, she's been through this enough to know that it's a critical part of taking the best care of yourself means that you're able to take the best care of those that you're caring for. So, best reminder of the morning, Mary Beth. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all you're doing. And everybody that's uh, on this call right now, thank you yes. for being here. You're all making a difference. Thank you. Mary Beth will be back at Inside Scoop. So we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.